It is so good to have you join us for Hope Today, our program of joy and faith. Thank you for coming along for a wonderful time of music and biblical teaching. For this program, Pastor Tom Cullen will be finishing up the four-part series considering the acts of worship. We have looked into adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and today we'll be looking into supplication. Can we ask God for things? Answers today in this program of Hope Today. Mac Wakefield comes first of all to encourage our hearts with more inspirational gospel music. Mac, would you lead us? Good morning. Welcome to Gospel Music on Hope Today. As you heard from Brian, we're going to be talking about worship today. Worship begins with a focus on God. Here's Dave McVeigh. I've come to bless your holy name again. I could ask you for a miracle, you know I stand in need. I could seek your hand to move and touch my family. emphasis in its place makes a good start, but we are needy people, and where would we be if God didn't care? Hear the Booth Brothers. We wouldn't have strength to bear our sorrow if God, if God 
didn't care There never would be a glad tomorrow If God, if God didn't, care, didn't care There never would be a hope of earning A mansion in the sky you by those welcoming bells would not be ringing if God if God didn't care, didn't care those heavenly voices wouldn't be singing if God if God didn't care, didn't care he wouldn't have said we The Booth Brothers reminding us some of the ways in which God does care for us. And here's Deborah Talley to tell us not just he takes care, he takes real good care of you and me. Goodness, I can see. I can see. I serve him with gladness. I have no regrets, for he walks beside me. Why should I worry? Why should I fret? Faith to strengthen every day. His guiding light. Each day. Every day is mine and I go on Jesus anytime you see God takes good care of me Every morning, noon and night He's taking good care of me I'll praise His name throughout eternity Real good care 
Welcome back to Hope Today. During the last three weeks, we've been examining the different elements of worship, adoration, confession, and thanksgiving. Today, I want us to think of supplication, that is, asking. We sometimes think that it is a low type of worship and a lesser kind of prayer. But Jesus clearly calls us to ask, seek, and knock at the door of God's heart. Because of God's love, we can ask in prayer and in worship. Here is Paul Balak. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you've poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises, oh compassion so There are some people who worship God and it's all about themselves. They're always looking for something from God, a better life, an easier way, a faster car. But there are others who never ask God for anything because they believe that it is a low form of spirituality. But as we read scripture, we discover that neither attitude is correct. When we worship God, it is to glorify His name, to adore Him, to give thanks to Him. We need to be taken out of the center of our worship and place God there. But on the other hand, we need to realize that God is our loving Heavenly Father who wants us to depend on Him and ask. Jesus God in the flesh said that when we pray, we should say, give us this day our daily bread. That means that we are to depend on God for our everyday living. We are to ask God to provide us for the means and the way to live. I love it when one of my children comes to me and says, Dad, could you help me with this? Of course, I couldn't think of a greater joy than sitting down and figuring out a problem or solving an issue with one of my children. Now for me, I need to be needed. But God doesn't. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need us to ask Him for help. But I believe that there is still a joy for God when we ask. 
For when we ask, we are admitting we cannot on our own, and we need God. This is why asking is an important part of worship. There is an emptying of self when we ask God to help us, direct us, provide for us. When we ask God to intervene in life, it is an admission that we cannot do life on our own. So don't hesitate to ask God. Bring Him your petitions, for in them God is glorified and we truly worship. Let's join Salt of the Sound in saying, Lord, I need Thee every hour. In the New Testament book of James, we read these words. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. In other words, we are to ask God for help in the midst of trouble. I know it's tempting to give up the faith during difficult times. It's tempting to say, God doesn't care about me. God has forgotten about me. God has abandoned me. He's turned his back on me. But the call of Scripture in the book of James is, don't give up on God. Don't walk away from God in the midst of trials and difficulties. Instead, pray. Go to God in prayerful dependence upon Him. Go to God and recognize His fatherly care for you and pray. Put Him in the center of your life at all times, even when the blessings seem scarce. Why? Because He is God. It's like asking a drowning man why he reached out for the life preserver in the middle of the ocean. He would tell you, it was the only thing that could possibly rescue me in the midst of the waves. It was Augustine who said that you should not begin to pray for all you want until you realize that in God, you have all you need. We turn to God in times of trouble and ask for his intervention because he is what we need in times of trouble. The Bible says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. So the hymn goes, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. 
Here's one of my favorites, Laura Story with Blessings. We pray for blessings. We pray for peace. Comfort for family. Protection while we sleep. We pray for healing. For prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear each spoken need. Yet love is way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? Cry in anger when we cannot feel you near We doubt your goodness We doubt your love As if every promise from your word is not enough life, one of the things that Isaac Watts set as an objective was a massive project to adapt the Book of Psalms for Christian worship. 
In 1719, his book entitled The Psalms of David Imitated in the Language of the New Testament was published. His hymn, Joy to the World, that we sing at Christmas time, was based on Psalm 98. In Psalm 90, we read, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations, and from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Psalm 90 became the basis for Isaac's beloved hymn, O God, our help in ages past. This most embracing hymn was played on the radio by BBC as soon as the World War II was declared. It was later sung at the funeral service for Winston Churchill. This hymn is often sung at Remembrance Day services still today. Listen to the first verse. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Can you imagine the hope and comfort these words must have brought the soldiers who were in certain stormy blast for the purpose to secure our freedom today? Here is Don Moen with his rendition of O oh God Our Help in Ages Past. O oh God our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home under the shadow of thy throne still may we dwell secure sufficient is thine arm alone and our defense is sure Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame, from everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou my guide while life shall last and our eternal home. We're talking about supplication, or asking God, as an important part of our worship and praying. We've discovered that it helps overcome selfishness and expresses dependence upon God. But there are some who persist and say that we shouldn't ask God for anything. They point out, Jesus said, that God, your Heavenly Father, knows what you need before you ask Him. Therefore, we don't need to ask God for anything. In reality, this verse should not keep us from asking God for help and direction in life, but should drive us to prayer. For what Jesus is saying is that our God is the loving Heavenly Father who cares for us and is ready and able to answer our prayers. Think of it this way. I don't do the grocery shopping in our house. Janet does all the grocery shopping. And she does a masterful job. She's always on the lookout for bargains, and she reads the flyers with an eagle eye. I can tell you that nothing frustrates her more than to have a store advertise a special and then to arrive at the store and discover they don't have it in stock. Not that they're sold out, but that they never even stocked the item in the first place. Jesus says, God, your heavenly Father, cares about you and is able to answer your prayers because his warehouse is full. You will never get a rain check from God. He is ready to answer your prayers because he knows what you need even before you ask him. 
So ask. He's able to answer your prayers. He's ready to answer your petitions. Not because of the form of your prayers, but because he is the loving Heavenly Father who cares about you and knows what you need even before you ask him. He will listen to you. Glenn Soderholm affirms the truth. When the weight of this world crashes down on you, God will listen to you. When the sky turns black and your thoughts turn blue, God will listen to you. Understands how his children feel. God will listen to you. When the river of tears cannot be contained, God will listen to you. You're like a drowning man in the pouring rain. God will listen to you. He will listen to you. Always listen to you. Understands how his children feel. God will listen to you. When the light explodes in a world gone wrong, God will listen to you. When your heart beats strong with a grateful soul, God will listen to you. He will listen to you, always listen to you. He understands how his children feel, God will listen to you. We've been talking about asking God, depending on Him in our petitions. The question arises, how do I keep from being self-centered and selfish in my asking of God? I sometimes wonder if my requests are legitimate. We are told in the New Testament book of James, you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. How do we avoid that? Well, first, realize that God wants you to grow in your faith and be mature in your relationship with Him. So, He won't honor that prayer that says, Lord, keep me safe, happy, and give me a problem-free life. Don't give me any of those trials that help me grow in my faith. I'm pretty sure God won't honor that prayer. Second, be honest with God in your petitions. Say to Him, God, This is my heart on the matter, and I'd really like you to do this. But if you have other plans, far be it from me to get in the way. You've asked me to make my requests known, and that's what I'm doing. But if what I'm asking for isn't a good gift, if the time isn't right, and if I'm not ready to receive it, no problem. Your ways are higher than my ways, and your thoughts higher than my thoughts. If you have different plans... We'll go your way, God. May your will be done. It's God's desire to give us all good things. We know that. Yet, so many requests are generated by sheer selfishness. Guard against that by being honest and asking that His will would be done in your life above all. The Reflections Trio sing, I Ask the Lord. The 
stars, the sun, the sky, and gave me eyes to behold. I thank the Lord for everything, and I count my blessings each day. You're listening to Hope Today. Have you practiced the sweet hour of prayer that calls you from a world of care and bids you at the Father's throne make all your wants and wishes known? Casting Crowns reminds us of the truth. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. And bids me at my Father's throne Make all my wants and wishes known In seasons of distress and grief My soul has often found Tempters there by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I the consolation. And share till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize. Shout while passing through the air Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer Have you ever played the game hide-and-seek? Of course you have, when you were a kid. Well, it's been said that there are some kids who hide too well. They hide so well that the seekers give up on them and go home, leaving the one hiding to wonder why everyone left them alone in his hiding place. What does this have to do with supplication, with asking God for help in life? Well, there are some people who play hide-and-seek with God, and they hide too well. 
They keep their pain, their spiritual battles, their marital battles, their child-rearing headaches to themselves, and they never call out to God for help. But that's not the way God intended us to live. He wants us to call out to him, to trust him, and to know that he loves you so much that he's there for you when you ask. I don't want to bother God with my troubles, some people say. Listen, that's not biblical. God's word says, cast all your burdens on him, for he cares for you. The Collingsworth family affirm the awesome power of prayer. When a mortal can talk to God Almighty, I know that his voice is heard. What a wonder it is that he understands. As we finish up another Hope Today program, our hope is that you have sensed God's blessing. May you always know in your heart that God loves and cares for you. Talk to Him anytime, anywhere. We would love to hear from you. You can reach us by email to listener at hopetoday-llp.ca. Once again, send your notes to listener at hopetoday-llp.ca. Hope Today is produced at Straight Path Studios. We look forward to being with you and your friends next time for another program of cheer. Until then, keep looking up. Jesus is coming again.